This is the Audio Podcast Show 131, recorded on the 7th of October 2014, Change of Orcs. Yes, indeed, we are back with the Audio Podcast after a one-week break. It feels like longer. I am Samuel Freeman, that was Scott Hewitt. Adam Yanch is here as well. Hello, and I've got new surroundings and a new speedy internet connection. Ha ha ha. So I should look great, because supposedly I'm now running in HD, and Scott and Sam are still running in SD. Of course, you can get in co- contact with the audio podcast the standard ways. You can head to YouTube or at the audio podcast, Twitter at the audio podcast, or by email, show at the audio podcast.co.uk. Let's get started, gentlemen. Okay, so the show notes are at theaudiopodcast.co.uk slash show slash 131 and in the news first this week is a new R-Door release. Indeed so, a, a recommended update um, for, for everybody. Lots of critical bug fixes in it, but R-Door version 3.5.403 came out October 2nd, so a couple of days there. Um, and it actually fixes some pretty major bugs. There was, there was, a, there was a bug around which would actually result in MIDI and audio files being deleted. So this is a critical bug that you should get fixed. Um, there, there, there's still problem. Um, they, they still acknowledge there's also a couple of problems on OS X in the 64-bit version as well. So this is not the fix that this is not the release that fixes that problem. If you were hoping it was, was. but it is nonetheless a recommended fix for everybody else. So there you go. Cool, Leo. Okay, moving on. Um, so not yet released, but still in preview mode is Max Seven, who have released. Well, two videos since we last broadcast. Um, the number two of three was the cat's rave, which um, highlighted the fact that shadows are now easy to do in rendering. And then number three is has not been seen by me yet. What happens in number three? So it's well worth a watch. The cool feature that they bring to there's lots of features they kind of show again, but the one that they really exaggerate on and is really cool is the fact that Max now auto recovers patches. So if you crash Max, when you start it up, it will offer to recover what you were previously working on in most situations. So that's pretty um that's pretty cool. The other great feature as well, which it was announced today, which was announced with this release, and this was today, is that the grace period is now open. So if you buy Max six, you get it twenty percent off and a free upgrade to seven when it arrives. So Max seven must be soon. This is a good time to buy Max then. If it's 20% off and you get a free upgrade. The 7, yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Nice. It's, yeah. nice. It, it, it's a good time. It's a good time. I've used Max 6 so few times that I wish I hadn't bought it at all and I could buy it now instead, but never mind. <sighs> oh, well. I like this video. It's called Sam's... Go on. Yeah, I, I was wondering if which version of Max is... When they're going to update Max, update Max for live in live, actually, because I... People know I spend a lot more time in live now than I do Max by itself, and a lot of time in Max for live. So I was wondering when version, you know, when it will move a proper version number for that as well. Because at the moment, Max for live is running at five in most uses. So yeah. hmm, that's curious. I wonder how how does that affect, you know, with Max six patches being made for Max for live? Is it just not mined or? It just it, it seems to be okay. Mm-hmm. I, I guess a, a Max for Live patch is a very different thing to a Max patch, though, in terms, like, you wouldn't, you know, you can only make Max for, you can only really make the patches for Max for Live in Max for Live, so. That's... So, so there you go, that, that's your, the, the, the audio podcast tip of the day, you can only make Max for la- Live patches in Max for Live. We, we like to offer these great insights. And moving on to some other discounts, this time from Isotope, um, are offering Break Tweaker, the drum sculpting and beat sequencing environment that blurs the lines between rhythm and melody on discount until the 16th of October. Woo. We like lines blurring. That's great. Um, are we, has anyone got anything to say on that? No, just keep going. Cool. Nectar. Nectar have released an, a firmware update, is it, for their... Panorama series, so the large keyboardy things that interact with Reason. Reason 8 has been released. I suppose that ought to be in this show as well. It's happened in that gap, but we'll be back with news of that in the future. We, we talked about the fact that Reason 8 was going to be released on the day it was released. And then it was released. So yeah. And, and now following that release, 
there is updates to Nectar so that the hardware works, which means that this hardware works now from anything from version 5 up all the way to 8. Yep. They also included uh, 24 new rack extension mappings as well. So. Cool. For some of the new racks and stuff. Awesome. Yep. Very good. Um, this one is from a... I, I, don't, have we ever, I don't know if we've ever had Ollie on the show. We've talked a lot about having Ollie on the show, but I don't know if we've ever actually had Ollie on the show. But, Sam, I saw you put this story here, which is a new release from Oliver Larkin. Yeah, so this him he's announced it through his webpage, but for sale through, um, what's it called, Plugin, Plugin Boutique. Boutique. Yep, is the Virtual CZ, which is an emulator and editor for the Casio CZ series of keyboards. So the CZ1, CZ101, 3000, and the 1000. Yep. Yay. Yay. I- I remember going all the way to Brighton on the train once to because uh, I won a CZ5000, I think it was, mm-hmm. on eBay. And I went down to Brighton, I picked it up, I brought it back to where I was going, and it didn't work. Uh-oh. And I think it was that it did work, but I'm not sure if taking it on the train was the smartest idea. <laughs> so there you go. Be careful when you're tra- traveling with your CZ. Or get Ollie Larkin's version, and you don't need to worry about it. Well, that's it. I should imagine it's probably a lot more easy to program the sounds through the VST interface with kind of like a bit of 21st century UI thinking added in. But the thing that's most exciting about this is that if you do have a working CZ um, keyboard, then you can use the plugin as a SysX editor. So you can transfer settings from the hardware to the virtual and back. That is brilliant. That is really cool. And you know what? That reminds me of a bit. It, it's something I wish existed now, but I don't think people are going to care so much about this functionality. But do you remember Sound Diver? It was an, it was an eMagic um, program. And, of course, it was lost in the transition from eMagic to Apple. But basically, Sound Diver was this... Uh, like the king of librarians and, um, and editors for, for all sorts of MIDI hardware... Um, it would you could actually grab the names of of all of your sounds off your modules and then plant them straight into Logic and yeah I mean how about that Ollie can you make that for us please <laughs> Sound Diver that'd be amazing anyway so Very... yeah I'm I'm looking forward to dusting off I'm yeah I'll probably I'm gonna see if my I've got CZ one in storage somewhere so I'm gonna get it out and see if it still works. Last time I tried to use it, the MIDI input on it was a bit, a bit iffy, so I don't know if it's going to work with SysX anyway. But mm. Of course, if you head to the audiopodcast.co.uk forward slash show forward slash 131, scroll down to Virtual CZ Story, you can watch the YouTube video of the plugin. So that's fantastic. Um PD, Sam. PD. No, yes, I, I've so... become distracted. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to stop you right now there. I've okay. become completely distracted because I was very interested in the sound diver that you were talking about, Adam. And there is indeed a report of somebody running it on their 10.9. Yeah. <laughs> Does it even work? Yeah. I mean, it, did it ever make the jump to to the Intel platform? I will... No, I, 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 it, did, it didn't make the jump, but what I am going to do is just quickly, we were under the virtual seeds, I will just quickly leave a comment on our website, which obviously any of our listeners could do as well if they wanted to, and in that I will quickly reflect the... I think we should do it as plunder for next week. No, no, this is this is, this is very relevant. I'm saying it, for me, that was the most interesting thing about what we were talking about there for a minute. Was oh yeah, it wasn't that Ollie's worked really hard to make... No, 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 it was the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to add that, although we do not know Ollie, um, I would have... What I would have been clueless listen, be excited about it, whoever made it. I think that these these are awesome sounding yeah, synthesizers. No, I think we did think you were, <laughs> you know, awesome. I, I'm now uh, <laughs> suffering from other problems here. I'm almost out of. There's well, not many have... synthesizers that offer eight point um, envelopes. Usually you've just stuck with ADSR, which is like That's four cool. points or something, you know. But what we have been distracted a, a, away from is PD and okay. a new version of. This brings us to the end of the news section and bookmarks. With the first news item, with a very kind of similarly oh, no. low... Is there more news after this? Oh, no, no. Sorry, I see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a new release with a kind of low formatting style web page describing it. And this is 
from Millipoka, it's actually quite old news now. This was posted shortly after we last broadcast, but it is for the latest stable version of PD, which is 046-1. Oh that is a terrible website, isn't it? I mean, not which, terrible, but it's the the one that explains all of Miller Pocket software. It's basically from 1995, um, and probably I don't even know if it has any style sheet or anything like that in, involved with it. No, there's no there's no style sheet attached. There's also no JavaScript. There's no mess in. It's just you know, HTML head title close head body. There we go. Yeah, I looked at that page, and the, the main thing that impacted me about that page was the fact that it loaded so quickly. Exactly. That's because it is 79 lines of HTML. Well, you know, that doesn't matter to me because I'm on Fireball Broadband. <laughs> so all, all pages load that fast now. It's fantastic. Okay, guys, I need, uh, I need to suggest that you refresh your, your notes at this point. Okay. Has Adam also been... I've I've been up to jiggery pokery during the show, and we're just about we finished the news. There's no other today. We're gonna head into Ziplander. Blunder. Why? And I see that Adam Why? added something to the plunder. I have, and I just had to make make sure that you guys knew that it was there. Um, I've done a bit of a Kickstarter corner again, Three. and this week it is the audio jacket by AIOG Group. And effectively, um, to be honest, I've scanned it, and it basically just looks like an audio, a jacket with audio inbuilt into it with little speakers, and it's machine washable, so you can put it in the wash and it doesn't destroy the electronics. When you say um, audio built in, what, what do you mean? What is built in here? There is like, like is there sound waves within the fiber of the cloth, or what, what are we seeing? Uh, okay, so oh. it's got it's got earphones hidden into it, so if, if you're on the YouTube feed now, you can have a look at me. Um, and my hoodie, um, built in here, built in here, little earphones. Uh, but it's also got speakers built in a bit further up the hood. Um, and I mean, yeah, it's um, it, it's pr it's pretty cool. And you've got some buttons a bit further down. There's a microphone built in further down the sleeve. Um, and then you've got the audio jack that's actually in your pocket. So that's kind of built in. You just plug in your whatever you've got into your pocket there. It's a nice little thing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's got the buttons, so it's got the the T R R R R R R S type um, connection. Trrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Oh, we've lost Adam. We've lost Adam Slayer. Scott's gone. Yeah, I noticed that Scott had gone, but we're still running. So Scott's not usually the one who, who drops out. It's usually me, but not anymore. Well, not with you've not got... with fiber fiber broadband. <laughs> Uh, so we're we're left a bit stuck here because Scott wrote this, uh, put this article up, and it seems neither of Sam or I have read it. Um, That's fine. We can move on to the final item, which is that there is a very old synthesizer for sale going on auction. When is it? When is it to bid? It's at on the twenty second of October. You can bid somehow if you've got in the region of twenty to thirty thousand pounds to build a to buy a synthesizer that was designed for or designed by Hermann von Helmholtz. And in fact, it's twenty, thirty thousand dollars Dollars. So yeah. you don't even need that many pounds, and the guy, that's the guide price, so who knows, it might go for a lot more. But this is a... Uh, it, it wasn't built by off his theories and his concepts, and it's the first... one of what's considered one of the first electronic synthesizers. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I would suggest that it would be an um, uh, an, ad an additive type synthesizer because of you know, we all know Helmholtz's ther theorems of uh, sine waves adding together and all this kind of stuff. Um, and this comes from the early 20th century. I mean, we're talking like in the first 10 years of the 20th century. So it must be a, a really nice piece. And if you actually go to the... Uh, Fact Mag article where I found this, you get a really good picture of it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you've got uh, twenty, thirty thousand dollars just lying around, maybe forget the audio jacket, go straight for the uh, Helmholtz synthesizer. Yep, built by Max Cole, who's apparently famed for using awesome materials in his builds of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the show. Um, I don't know. I don't have a button to press end. Do you have a button to end the broadcast? I have no idea how we're going to do this. We might just have to keep going until Scott somehow gets back on. Um, is he actually here? Oh, he's here. Okay. Let's keep talking. Um, <laughs> Shall I start the clock for the end of the show? <laughs> yes, I think, I think you should. I've just, uh, I've just messaged Scott on uh, Google messaging through Gmail. And, uh, yeah, we'll find out. He's um, back. Someone's back. The audio podcast has joined the call. Oh, yay. Hooray. Scott, you're back. You're just in time. Do you have an end this broadcast button? Oh, wait. Scott, before you go, before we stop, um, the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the plunder article, audio in games. Yes. Ah. Uh, yeah, oh. we didn't really say anything about that, except that it's there. That, that, that's fine, that's all there is really to say about it, you know? <laughs> so, oh, so we could have stopped already. Oh, oh, oh. did you just keep on going? Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry about that. You guys oh, know... We, well, we jumped you know, into the... Our listeners, surely, and you guys know that I just have a list of... I have an ever-populating list of, of things that we plunder when we need plunder, and then I just make a selection out of them, basically. But it's fine. It's more the problem was that uh, you weren't here and we got to the end and then there wasn't a button to stop the, the podcast. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, well, I, I have a stop broadcast button, so that's funny. That's I don't good. know what happened. I got booted, and it just wouldn't let me back in. But I got back in eventually, so. Well, my apologies. Well, in which case, Sam and Adam, I gather, have led us to the conclusion of the audio podcast show 131. <laughs> don't mm -hmm. forget, you can subscribe and find us online and complain about whatever you wish at theaudiopodcast.co.uk. I've been Scott Hewitt, and I had a brief and partial involvement. <laughs> partial? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you were there for most of the show. I'm Samuel Freeman. I'm having a great time. And I'm Adam Yanch. And I will see you. Oh, are we having a show next week? Probably. Uh, then I will. S we will all see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>